Uh, Shiloh School addresses community issues today on Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And we have a full house, like in poker, you know. And uh, we have Professor Constantine Constancio uh, Paranal. He's the teacher at Shiloh. And it's a special class of, of, of students who are dedicated to looking at our community, uh, finding the issues in our community, uh, contacting, connecting with uh, small business in our community, helping those small business, and in the process, helping the community in general. So welcome to the show, all of you, the whole full house. Say hi. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I knew you'd say Hello, that. everyone. Yeah. Constancio, Professor, can you, can you give us a, an introduction of the scope of this discussion and uh, you know the, your various uh, students who are here today with us? Yes. No. Thank you again for um, Jay for for inviting us today and and our group. So really, what we really want, what we wanted to share, at least with the audience, is how our students at Shiloh College of Business, particularly uh, these three, Melanie, Kent, and Crystal, who are Masters of Science and Marketing Management students at the Shiloh College of Business, are doing uh, to help our community. So this is a specific class in digital marketing. And the goal is to apply the knowledge and the skills that we're learning in class and uh, apply it in, in, in a practical setting by helping small businesses. Um, especially with the pandemic, I think a lot of our small businesses have been impacted and we wanna use this course to be able to assist those small businesses. So it's really important for our students to be a part of the community and to participate in how the community is going to emerge post pandemic. Oh yeah, that's great. And you know, we, we, we need to say that some of the businesses uh, that I've heard of have gone out of business and some of them are going out of business and some have yet to go out of business, but will go out of business. And that is a dynamic, um, you know, uh, a dynamic community. Uh, but let me ask you, you mentioned that, um, that we are going to apply the skills that you are teaching in the class uh, and I think, uh, you know, a good beginning here would be for you to identify those skills. What, what kind of skills are we talking about? What I was saying a while ago is really beyond the technical skills of digital marketing uh, and understanding um, how it works and applying technology and using data to um, make marketing decisions. I think beyond that, we're really helping students to gain their professional human skills and soft skills. Because part of what we do in class is working with small businesses, learning how to engage with clients, learning how to work in teams, and understanding how to manage client expectations, because that's exactly what they're going to be doing once they're out of school. And I think some of the groups are really finding that it, you know, it, it's one of the valuable things to learn is you know, your clients will demand a lot of things from you. And part of what you need to know is how do you manage those expectations and how do you provide value to your clients looking at you not as a student but as a professional one who is knowledgeable and has the skills to help them beyond you know the the issues and the pain points that they're experiencing wow that's really valuable um i was talking about law school a minute ago any of your students here melanie uh, kent or crystal uh, you guys contemplate going to law school if you do raise your hand Mm, crickets. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Constancio, can, can you introduce Melanie and Kent and Crystal? What are, they, what are they really like? I'm sorry, say it again. Can you introduce your three students here? What are they really like? Really? Oh, yes. No, I have three wonderful, amazing, bright, talented, good-looking students in front of me. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, but we have Melanie, Kent, and Crystal, and um, you know these three, three students are, have been have shown you know great work in class. They participate um, in class and provide a lot of insight to class discussions. And the reason why they are here is because I I really want them to share what they've been doing in class and outside of class. Because not only are they students, but they are also working professionals. Uh, Melanie works for Bank of Hawaii. 
uh, Kent works for Eastwood Center and Crystal works for a wedding company. So with all of those experience and background, they bring a lot of flavor, flavor to, to the discussions in class. Yeah. Okay, well, let's start with Melanie. Uh, Melanie, I, I'd like to make a small loan. Can you help me? For sure. <laughs> so why, why are you in uh, the business school in the first place and why are you in this class and what is your project and how did you select it? Um, well, first of all, I'm in business school because after finishing up my undergrad, I feel like there was still so much for me to learn. And so I just thought this would be like a good opportunity for me to learn at the same time while I'm working so I can kind of apply what I learn into my work and then, you know, just keep growing um, with my skill set and my knowledge when it comes to like how to be a good marketer. Okay. How do you like, uh, you know, the soft, soft skill versus um, uh, hard skill, so to speak? I guess the hard skill is the technical skill that Constancia was talking about. Which do you favor? Are you a people person or a technology person? I'm more of a people person, but I think there are times when I'm not a people person. <laughs> But mostly I do love interacting with everyone. And then I think soft skills are really valuable because um, technical skills, you can always learn them, you know, but then soft skills, you kind of have to practice and it can only get better as you get to communicate with people around you. So I think, yeah. Yeah, so you wind up examining this business, whatever business it is, um, and uh, listening, listening, listening so hard, you know, like, uh, what do they call it in Stanford? Design, design thinking, you know, if you've ever heard of that. Um, design thinking is you listen and then you tell your client what he really wants to ask you. Because sometimes what he asks you is not the real question. Anyway, so you listen and then you give advice. And my question to you is, do they take your advice? Um, yeah, well, working with like the small business that we're working with for our group, there's definitely a lot of like communication and like from the owner himself, you know, there's a lot of back and forth. He has a lot of great ideas. And like, I think our job is to like really, you know, get what he's saying and then turn that into, you know, how you said what he's really asking and then making our recommendations. Most of the time, he's really open to our recommendations. Um, Thankfully, and I think it's a great part of like us working together and just like bouncing off of each other's ideas. Um, so that's a really great thing. Constancio, did you, did you say that Crystal and Melanie were on the same team? Uh, yes, they are. Oh, good. Then I'm going to go to Crystal. Uh, how much of what Melanie said is true, Crystal? Um, everything Melanie said is true. Our oh, owner. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to support my teammate. No. <laughs> hey, right on. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're truly fortunate, you know, not every group project or like small business you work with is going to be picture perfect, but I think we lucked out and got someone that's not only open-minded, but willing to support us in our endeavors. Cause he truly does want what's best for his business. So it's really a great opportunity. Well, you know, we haven't identified the business of the individual, and I'm happy about that. But let me ask you, how is he doing in COVID? Because as I said before, there's a lot of businesses, it depends on what sector you're in, of course, but there's a lot of businesses that are under pressure right now. Is your client under pressure? Um, I would say that our client is doing fairly well considering most of his sales are generating online. So luckily he doesn't have a um, hard storefront at the moment, like he's using other distribution outlets. So it wasn't really hit too hard from the pandemic. And I believe he only has room to grow, especially with where we're heading. Right now we're focusing on email marketing, social media, and like brand awareness. So we're really excited to see how, when we put these efforts, it can really help him grow. No, I get what I get from you say from what you're saying is that uh, challenges are opportunities. COVID is a challenge for sure. And part of your job, you know, you and Melanie, anybody else on the team, um, part of your job is to turn these, you know, troubling challenges into opportunities that you wouldn't even think of otherwise. Uh, are you doing that? And, and uh, how successful are you in finding opportunities that are actually changing the way 
your client does business for the future? I would say that we are definitely taking baby steps towards that because since they are a small business, they're fairly new. It's really right now about laying the foundation and ensuring that they have the tools once we finish this campaign to really continue on and be able to help themselves as well because we don't want just our campaign to be this short thing. We want them to be able to continue to grow and like continue onwards in the future. So I would say that we are trying to address these challenges, but as we are recovering from the pandemic, that they're doing okay for now. Okay. Do you expect to have a long-term relationship with this client? Uh, I see Constantio is shaking his head yes. He's not suggesting an answer for you, but let me ask him. Constantio, do you expect your students to have long-term relationships with the clients in these teams? Oh, yes, definitely. I think that's one of the main goals and one of the, the goals or objectives of the class is not just to see the client as a customer per se, but a mentor or, um, you know, someone who's part of the community. I think that's what we really want to do and want our students to gain from it. Because at the end of the day, particularly in Hawaii, we're such a small place, right? Or everybody knows each other. And, uh, and I want our students to develop that type of relationship just beyond a client agent type of relationship, but really more of a, you know, being a part of the same community. Yeah, sure. Who knows where it goes, you know? This is a bonding experience. So Kent, you know, um, we've talked about uh, trying to help um, businesses, uh, in this case, uh, it sounds like a retail business, um, you know, uh, take advantage of, um, you know, the internet and online sales and all that. But you're, you're with the East West Center, right? The East West Center is interested in foreign policy, and you have this fabulous uh, new president who uh, is actually very close to think tanks, uh, Susie Lump. And um, so I, I wonder, I mean, are, are you into the technology or the foreign policy? How does it get to be local, local community issues when you're with a global organization? You have to, you know, change the side of the brain that you're using when you walk over to the Shidler School? Um, yeah, so just a slight correction, though, I'm no longer with the East West Center right now, but when I was a part of um, the East West Center, I was working in the fundraising department, so that one was kind of just um, helping out with the online fundraising and developing, like, a giving website so that people um, that want to support the East West Center are able to give in a uh, more uh, digital format or online format, um, which was like one of the bigger initiatives for when I joined the East West Center. Um, in relation to what you were asking about like foreign policies and how the, the, um, the school of thought changes from when I leave, when I left work to go to school, um, it was kind of just trying to learn the concept and ideas that were in class and apply them to my work. Um, but yeah, just learning all the concepts in class and being able to relate this back, relate it back to the small businesses, um, it's just been a great experience. Um, my company that we're working with is a food and beverage company. So you can assume how hard um, it, it was impacted by the pandemic. Um, they had to change their, they had to completely change their operations pre-pandemic to now. And um, yeah, just learning about the company and the owner um, has shown me like how much effort has been put in and the, and the hard work that it takes to run a successful local business. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so that's, you're not doing fundraising for them. They're, they're a profit corporation. I guess all of the companies, Constancio, that are involved in the program are profit corporations rather than nonprofits. Am I right? Uh, at least for this for this particular cohort, it's mostly uh, for profit. But there are instances when we've worked with nonprofit organizations as well, mm -hmm. and the objectives tend to be different, right? When you're working with nonprofit versus for profit, like what Kent had mentioned, for a nonprofit, it's usually fundraising, it's usually uh, awareness and getting the community involved. Uh, that's what normally where the help is, yeah. and. Um, Kind of sharing the programs that they are spearheading or initiatives that they are offering the community that's where usually the help yeah is. well next time around you know you might think of think tech we we're a nonprofit, and 
and we need help every day. Oh, yes, absolutely. We would love to work with Think Tech Hawaii, of course. <laughs> and actually, that's one of the things that we're, um, you know, all of these companies are usually um, kind of either uh, suggestions or recommendations from, from people that I know of, that I've worked with, and they understand that we are using the class to not only for students to learn and be able to apply what they're learning in class, but also to help small businesses. And so for any small businesses that would like to be a part of our class, I would definitely welcome, uh, you know, the opportunity would work to work with small businesses. Now that's great. That's great. So let me go back to you, Ken. So you were doing fundraising, uh, internet fundraising, and you, uh, you learn how to code, you learn how to make websites, you learn how to keep um, accounting records, if you will, on, uh, you know, using, um, you know, software and all that. Did you, uh, did you write code? Did you design software? Did you use uh, off-the-shelf software? And and what you learned before doing fundraising, how does that play in helping advise your client now? Yeah, so um, unfortunately, I didn't learn how to code or anything. We kind of used this platform called Classy, which is um, similar to Squarespace in, in website design and building. Um, it's pretty much plug and play. You kind of just design the websites to fit um, what you want. And in terms of like the giving platforms, it was just a um, a site where people could easily give um, without having to traditionally mail in their checks. Um, in terms of like, um, could you repeat the second part of the question again? Are you using this, the, uh, the software, the skills the mm, call it computer skills, information technology skills that you learned before. Are you using them to, you know, consult and advise your client now? Yeah. So I think the main thing that I I learned from fundraising is um, the people that give. They just want to um, feel good, um, essentially, and that's kind of easily translated into working with a small business because um, the company that I'm working with, because they're like a food and beverage company, they want to make people feel good and special through their food. And um, what I've learned from working in fundraising is how to provide value to people who give. And then for um, our company that we're, our small business that we're working with, it's kind of taking those same key concepts and translating it to their food and how they're able to make people feel special and satisfied um, in that way. Um, so would, you, our, our, would you say that you have given, um, you know, professional value in that regard to your current client, that you have given your current, current client new ideas, new systems, new ways to do outreach, um, you know, using computers or otherwise? Yeah. So the owner of the, um, small business that we're working with is, um, interesting in the fact that he kind of operates everything about the business from from the cooking, the restaurant side, um, to the online social media platforms and stuff. So he kind of, he kind of does everything on his own. So um, where we come in and try to help is to maybe optimize his efficiency and, and um, make it so that he doesn't have to focus so much on the technological side and rather focus on the operations instead. So it's kind of just making his life easier right now. Um, Got it. Got, well, you know, isn't that isn't that the role? You know, you you come in there, you have a clear head, you look and see what he's doing, you ask him what his problems are, you interpret that to find out what his real problems are, and and then you give him concepts where he can move into the next phase. Um, that's I should say him or her. May I just say that him or her? Okay, uh, them, whatever. <laughs> okay, Crystal, back to you. So, um, you know. The thing about it is that if I walk into a business, I am going to identify certain problems in that business. And of course, you know, being in the Shiloh School, studying there and taking courses, um, you know, you learn about the problems. And, you know, for example, um, I just picked this out of the air. For example, talking about advertising, uh, community contact, you know, I can't, can't refer to that briefly. Um, and it's talking about uh, human resources, which is always important you know, harnessing the, the most powerful resource of all human resources. So do you get involved in that? Um, you know, what, how do you spend your time? What are the issues that you address 
when you're in there with your client. I, when I say you, I mean you and Melanie. Although Melanie, I'm gonna ask you the same question and see if you wanna agree or rebut what Crystal has to say. Um, thank you for your question. I would definitely say it depends on client to client. And first, the most important part is doing research and seeing what their individual problems are, because I'm sure Kent's client, his problems are completely different than our client and depends too on how much the experience they have, if they're rebranding or what direction they need to go in. Um, I would argue our client, their main focus or main issue would most likely be just getting that brand awareness out there because it's hard when people don't know about a brand and know how great it is or the story or there's confusion. So just really getting their name out there and like having it be identifiable is one of our huge main objectives, especially here in Hawaii and having the market being so saturated, whether it's depending on their product or whatever industry you're in, there's so many competitors nowadays. So just really differentiating yourself and showing the value you provide to the consumer. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that strikes me is, uh, you know, Hawaii um, is often folded in on itself. In other words, you're talking about a local market, uh, local products, local customers, uh, or actually imported products. Most of the things we sell are imported. Um, but, you know, what about dealing outside? I might ask you all this question. What about exporting either systems, knowledge? This is going to be for you, Kent, I'm telling you now. I'm giving you advance warning. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, what about uh, connecting with Cincinnati? Uh, I, I should name other cities, but there are some cities in this country uh, that are so under underwater that I won't I won't list cities, but other places on the mainland where your client can deal with them, enhance his uh, or her, um, you know, market, so to speak, and geographical market and conceptual market. Um, do you help in that way? Do they care about that? Uh, do the business, you know? Uh, issues uh, that they are concerned with. The business issues include um, looking out, looking out from Hawaii. If the answer is no, just tell me no. Um, I think I can get started with this question. So for our client um, personally, we first wanted to focus, of course, on the local market. However, as we said, we are focusing on like digital efforts and digitally, you know, we are connected to the rest of the world. So of course, um, we do want to focus on in that area as it provides value to, you know, be able to expand beyond locally. And that is so much opportunity. But I think just the first step is to um, get us familiar with the local market. And then of course, at the same time, also keeping our opportunities and our eyesight, you know, far ahead and wide open to the rest of the, um, the world. How, how, how distant, how uh, ambitious are your aspirations in dealing with these guys? And I was reading up on Elon Musk the other day. Remember him? He's, he's more famous than Paul Simon right now. Um, so I Elon Musk, you know, had virtually nothing 20 years ago. Now he's the wealthiest man in the world. So do you say to your client, look, you know, whatever you're doing now, this is only the beginning. Um, you are You have the potential of being another Elon Musk. All you gotta do is focus, find the right you know, steps, the right um, approaches, the right the creative thinking, and you can do it too. You try to help your client with those aspirations, looking down the road, looking five, 10, 20 years down the road. Yeah, for sure. Our client, oh, personally, like, you know, talking to him, we know he has like big aspirations. And that's why we're here to help, like, not only on the short term, but also on the long term, helping like his big vision to eventually, you know, come to life and like help him realize his business his business on like a much bigger scale than what it is now. But of course, there's like a process to that. So we're taking it step by step. Constancio, do your students get a a bonus grade or something if they can turn their business clientele into multimillionaires or billionaires? I mean, I think they should, don't you? No, absolutely. I think the, um, you know, I always stress to our students that the main goal is when they run the campaign. So what's, what's actually going to happen is by November 1st, they're going to start running the campaign and they will have one month 
to run the campaign and then evaluate the effectiveness of the campaign if they're actually providing value, you know, um, measurable value to their clients and, you know, whether their campaigns are successful. But I think one thing to, to point out is that, you know, the, the type of businesses that we're actually supporting. So uh, the aspirational goals or the objectives are of our businesses are really different from what big corporations are aspiring to be. Not to say that their aspirations are not, you know, are, are minimal, but um, I think our goal is really to be a part of the community and to help small businesses uh, because they are the ones that are really struggling. They are the ones that are disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. And we see ourselves as a support system for the community, right? And, and I think that's where the value comes in. Uh, and the community needs it, especially now, I can tell right. you. You know, uh, one of our, one of our uh, uh, engineers was walking down Bishop Street the other day and noticed that every other store was closed. Right. Uh, every other restaurant was closed. Um, and, and I have, you know, independent confirmation of that. It's really interesting because in my practice, you know, we watched everything grow for 50 years. We watched it grow now and shrinking. So, so Kent, you know, what are you trying to do to show your professor that you, you got the goods, that you are, you have learned and applied the lessons from the classroom to the business um, community, um, that you have helped your client and that your client appreciates it and has benefited by it. Uh, how do you show him that? You write him a paper, you take a test, um, do you have oral exams? What's it like? You have to satisfy him that all of this is worthwhile and that you have made progress. Yeah, so the, the measurables for our, our project are given through um, executive presentations. Um, this kind of showcases exactly what we're working on and how we're able to implement that throughout the campaign. Um, of course, the true value is coming from the owner itself. So um, it's whether or not we can fulfill all the um, goals that they had in mind for us. And then, uh, of course, our internal goals to help them that we've identified through um, researching the companies. Um, but as far as grading goes for professors um, class, I think it all comes down to how well we're able to execute our ideas and if they are related to all the core concepts of the course itself. It would be a big deal, wouldn't it, if you went into a client situation and you, you know, uh, took the design thinking approach and found out what was really necessary to make this business work, uh, and then you made a system, let's say a computer system, um, new packages software, um, you know, a new, you know, I believe that every business would be better if somebody came in and made a better uh, information technology system for every business, but especially the state of Hawaii as a state. But that's another, that's another show, Constancia. Um, so, so if you can show your professor that you came in with a system uh, that's different and that you raised the bar within that business, would that go to your grade? Yeah, of course. I think um, if we're able to provide extreme value to the uh, business and change it in a way that um, makes them even more successful than they already are, then I think that would be a huge indication that what we've learned in class um, was applied practically or in practical um, means. And um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that resulted in an A. Yeah. Oh, OK. Well, I wouldn't be surprised either. Constancio, would you be surprised? Oh, no, of course. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't be surprised because these are all talented individuals. And, and what I do, too, I act as a, as a mediator as well, right? I, I'm a, a liaison to a certain degree where I work with the students. I check up on, on them and see how they're doing. And I also uh, am a liaison to the businesses. So I check mm. on the businesses as well and see if, there are ex if their expectations are being met, if the goals are being met, what their relationship with the students are. Um, and so that's kind of like one of my roles in, in this project is to manage both of the students and, and the client and the relationship to make sure that we come up with a productive and a valuable project at the end. Yeah, earlier this week, we had, a, we had a, uh, an interview with a woman who just defended her dissertation 
at the School of Ocean Earth Science. And uh, it was very interesting because throughout the process, and it lasted a while to write the dissertation, ultimately to defend the dissertation, uh, she had people who advised her. Um, she had her committee who, you know, who, who, who rode the process with her. They were always with her, always available, and uh, always helping her. And uh, I guess that's part of the whole, you know, experience when you're out there doing this, this kind of class. Um, but let me go to you, Crystal. This is a hard one. I saved it for you, okay? Um, so <laughs> can you tell us what you have learned in Professor Paranel's class? What are the lessons that you take away from all of this? By the way, I might ask the others the same question, by the way. Um, you know, I mean, what, what have you got under your belt now that you didn't have before? What are the profound life lessons, business lessons, you know, educational lessons that you've picked up in this class? I would definitely say that one of the most profound lessons is ensuring that the decisions and actions we're making are data-driven and that they're measurable because we want to ensure that we're truly being successful. Um, I would also argue that both the technical skills and soft skills have been truly beneficial. When I was interested in considering my master's, I was very, very interested in digital marketing. So being able to dive deeper into this field has been amazing. So super thankful for the opportunity to learn from Dr. Perinal. Yeah, let me say also in my observation, I practiced law for a long time. My observation, the people who are most successful, are the ones who can explain what they're doing, and all you three guys and your professor, <laughs> may I add, are good at explaining what you're doing. I mean, it's a, it's a power of uh, communication, the power of articulate expression is critical to success in business, for sure. And you always see that when you practice law. Uh, so, Melanie, um, what, you know, what have you learned? I mean, I, you mentioned before you kind of favor, kind of favor, you know, the soft power skills and all that. It's very important in life. What have you learned about that? About yourself, about the way you communicate with clientele and the other members of your team. What have you learned here in this class about those things? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think through this class, you know, Crystal, actually, we just met the semester. So it was really interesting work with, uh, working with group members who I've never known, but um, learning how to communicate and how to be a good team member and, you know, how to work together. And of course, for this project, working with like an actual client and as um, Professor Parnell said, managing the client expectations, um, being an effective communicator, it was all like, the soft skills that you know we got to practice and um, we've learned you know where we could get better what worked for us and then with his guidance we're um, learning on the way you know how to be how to communicate better how to um, exactly provide what the client wants and you know communicate everything um, that needs to be communicated <laughs> Well, you know, Kent, that goes for you. I mean, let's assume just for a moment that you're you're more like the technical hard skills person. I don't know if that's true. I'm just going to assume it for this this discussion. Um, you know, the the issue there is to uh, is to have the client accept what you're doing, because a, a lot of people who are good at the hard skills they go off in a corner and do something, and the client doesn't know, doesn't care, and then when um, you know the advisor is trying to tell them, you know, uh, about the work, the project, whatever. Um, it's too late. You know, he's already not interested. Um, so how, how do you handle that? That's the first part of my question. Will you remember the second part? I got a second part. Okay. Okay. How, how is all of this training you for your next chapter? Uh, after you graduate, maybe in graduate school, uh, and when you get out into the business community and, um, you know, mm, what's the word on, and jump in the pool, so to speak. Yeah, so um, talking about like the hard skills and stuff um, in relation to like our small business owner, um, a lot of the concepts and, and key ideas that we're working on are kind of alien to him. So it, it takes a lot of communication and understanding that his breadth of knowledge on, on the concepts that we're working on may not be at our level. So we kind of have to try and explain it in a way that he'll understand and just know and, and just to um 
tell him that what we're doing is essentially just trying to provide more value for his company. Um, and that's the main thing uh, between the relationship of our group and our business owner. At the end of the day, he just wants to ensure that his business is continuing to be successful and operating in the post-pandemic world. And um, translating our skills and what we've learned in class to our future careers um, is very important to um, in the long run because uh, in, in relation to our class, digital media, the uh, consumption of digital media is almost just it's just rising every single year. So being able to create these campaigns, social media collaterals, and understanding that the uh, the metrics and statistics that come with that um, are super important in our career. So uh, definitely skills uh, that we're learning in class are easily translatable to the to the real world. And we're doing that in the form of working with these small businesses as well. So Crystal, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to summarize this discussion. Um, and uh, tell uh, Contencio how, how you felt about being included in the show and what you learned from being in the media and having questions thrown at you and so forth. Um, you know, and, or whatever you want. If you want to do a, if you want to do a short poem or an aria from Puccini, it's okay too. But what are your thoughts here on the close? Um, yeah, of course, I want to thank Dr. Paranal and of course, Melanie and Kent and you as well, Jay, for having us and giving us this opportunity. It's been a blast and forced us to really think on our feet and summarize everything we've learned and really the importance of supporting local businesses in Hawaii and focusing on how we can ensure that their businesses are going to continue to grow and be successful, especially when overcoming the current pandemic and adversity of that and inflation and other societal issues. You know, my partner in my law firm for 50 years, I asked him what the, why he did this. And he's an extraordinary guy anyway, a great lawyer. Why, why did he do this? And he said, to help people. It's that simple. It's not for the money, it's to help people. Uh, Melody, let's go to you. I mean, how much of what Crystal said you agree with and what would you leave us with? Give us a message, make it profound. The pressure is on. <laughs> Um, well, I, of course, you know, I 100% agree with Crystal. And I think, as you said, the bottom line is to help the people and help the community and give value from what we learn. Because in the end, through our work or anything, we all just want to be a part of society and really provide value for everyone. I'm sure the school, the Shidler College of Business would be really delighted to hear that. Um, I really appreciate all of you. So Kent, you get the anchor man. I could say anchor woman, but you're you know you're the anchor man. Okay. Uh, so uh, give us your summary of this discussion. Uh, what do you find useful to carry away? In other words, let's assume it's over. Okay. And your friend is in the hallway, and he says, Kent, how did it go? What's your answer? Um, I would say that it went amazing. I mean. A lot of the, your questions were thought provoking and yes, it, it is a little nerve wracking and difficult to answer them on the spot, but I think engaging in these types of um, difficult conversations and um, thought thought provoking is important when we were stepping out of the stepping out of this meeting stepping out of the classroom and into the business world because um, those kind of conversations are going to be carried on throughout the rest of our lives in our professional careers. So definitely um, just trying to get our feet wet in this type of um, environment is important, um, not only for our, our personal growth, but professionally as well. So um, I, can't, I couldn't be more grateful. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's been a blast. Well, let me add that uh, over all the interviews we've done, one important metric for a successful guest, so to speak, is that they answer the questions. And uh, not everybody does. And if you, could, if you could carry that away, all of you have done that here with me, and I really appreciate it. You have answered my question. There are some people, and you can see them on, on national TV all day long, where if somebody asks them a question, they never come close to answering it. They give you a whole song and dance and, and distraction, but you guys have answered them. So, uh, Constancio, was this nerve-wracking for you, too? 
Oh yes, <laughs> of course. It, it's always nerve wracking um, because it's again you you'll you'll never know what questions are going to be thrown out. But it's also because FinTech Hawaii is is a huge platform. It's you know viewed by millions of audience and and what we say is going to stick out there forever. And so we want to be through, true to what we say and what we do, and we want to be authentic. And we also want to communicate, you know, the right message and also be the veritable ambassadors of the Scheidler College of Business and, of course, of Hawaii and how we're using what we're learning and, and um, you know, for the benefit of the community. Hmm. You know, I envy your students, Constancio, but I want to say, that I envy you at least as much. And to have a class like this, to have students like this, and to have the kind of you know, good nature uh, that you have. And it's, it's wonderful to, to meet your students and it's wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so much, Constancio. Thank you, thank you, our pleasure. Thank you, Melanie, thank you, Kent, thank you, Crystal. Great to have you on the show, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.